This is just a sample of the training available at itdvds.com. For complete training, please go to itdvds.com. Let's begin the sample. Now let's configure split scope. So in this scenario, we're going to have some redundancy with DHCP 01 and 02, but it's not going to be because the servers are communicating with each other. We're bas basically just breaking up the address pool and giving DHCP 01 a certain number of IP addresses to hand out and DHCP 02 the rest to hand out. So I'm going to do that with our 192.168.6.0 scope. I'll just right click on it. Let's go to advanced. Let's click on split scope. So I'll go ahead and click next to the splash screen and we'll add DHCP 02.itvscorp.com. Now we're going to specify how much of the address pool we want to give to our other server. So for example, if I take this to 50%, half the IP addresses will be available on DHCP 01, the other half will be on DHCP 02. And we can see our range here, our range is from .175 to .185. I'm going to change it. I'm going to do it 70-30 in this example. Let's go ahead and click Next. It says splitting the scope per the ratio shall result in deletion of active leases. Do we want to continue? And I'm okay with that. It basically just means some leases are IP addresses that were hand out that are going to be moved over to our DHCP02. So remember, the leases are not replicated when we split scopes. It's, we basically just have two separate DHCP servers, and this wizard is really just helping us set that up. So that's okay with me. I'll go ahead and click Yes. Now we can specify the delay in DHCP offer. So the host DHCP server, in our case DHCP01, the added DHCP0 is DHCP02. So if there's a delay, then the one without a delay is most likely going to be servicing most of the clients because the client will take whatever it gets first. So I'll just leave it at the default in this example, but we may want to you know, make the delay the same so that they both have an opportunity to service the clients if that's the kind of setup we want. We may have it where we just give DHCP02 like 10% of the IP addresses. Well, in that case, we'd want to put a higher delay on DHCP02, maybe like 3 milliseconds so that our main server DHCP01 is the one servicing the clients and obviously DHCP01 is down then DHCP02 will still respond it's just a couple milliseconds later so I'll go ahead and click next and finish and it was set up successfully so let's just go ahead and refresh here there's the scope on DHCP02 so if we take a look at it here, we can see it's actually inactive. So it's not uh, activated yet. So I would want to right click on it and activate it to make it so that it's actually serving IP addresses. And then if we go to the address pool, the pool is actually the same, 192.168.6.170 to 185. And if we go up here to DHCP01, we can see the pool is the same. Basically what it does is it adds an exclusion range for the other server. So this range, this range we added manually uh, in, in another movie, but this range here from dot one eighty one to dot one eighty five, these are actually the IP addresses that are going to be handed out by DHCP zero two. If we go over here, we can see that they're the only ones available one eighty one to one eighty five because there's an exclusion range dot one seventy to dot one eighty, and those are the IP addresses that are going to be handed out by DHCP zero one. Now it's important to know that when we set this up. It does create the scope options, so it created that on DHCP02, but if we have any server options, it doesn't go that far. We just set up the scope, so you can see the server options are different on DHCP01 versus DHCP02. So we'd want to make sure and configure those manually if that was necessary for our scope to function properly. So that's it. Split scopes are pretty simple. Now, what's the advantage of using like DHCP failover over split scopes? Well, with DHCP failover, we get the advantage of being able to use the entire address pool. With split scopes, we're breaking it up. So if there's a failure here on DHCP 01, it goes down. The address pool is still very small or whatever we have set on DHCP 02. It doesn't get to take over the scope and the pool 
of IP addresses that DHCP01 was using because they're really just two completely separate DHCP servers. There's no communication between the two. With DHCP failover, there was communication between the two, and on failure of, let's say, DHCP01, eventually DHCP02 could take over the entire address pool and most likely have enough IP addresses then to service everybody.